Welcome back to Will's Recap Channel. Today we will delve into a true and captivating story that unfolds against the backdrop of historical challenges. Our narrative follows Clemens Farrell, a German prisoner of war confined by the Soviet Red Army in a harsh Siberian labor camp. Picture this, traversing the unforgiving wilderness of Siberia, covering thousands of kilometers through extreme cold, hunger, and relentless brutality. Clemens faces a myriad of obstacles and challenges, yet he refuses to surrender to despair. Instead, he clings to hope and embarks on an unyielding pursuit of freedom. Stay tuned for a gripping journey through one man's relentless quest for liberty in the most unforgiving of landscapes. In a Siberian labor camp for German prisoners of war, there are no fences or guards, yet no one attempts to escape. The harsh Arctic conditions, with temperatures plunging to minus 40 degrees, make survival impossible without food and warmth. Despite this, a determined Nazi soldier refuses to accept his fate. Clemens Farrell desires to break free and reunite with his wife and daughter. An opportunity arises and he slips away by following a conveyor belt. Kicking away a wooden plank beneath the wheels, he swiftly climbs into a coal car. As the car starts moving slowly, Clemens Farrell gazes at the expansive starry night sky, secretly smiling. Finally, he's on his way home. In the next moment, the coal car abruptly stops due to a wooden stake, leaving Clemens Farrell puzzled. Cautiously peering out, he's spotted by a Soviet sentry. Escaping means confinement in an open-air dungeon, and relentless rain adds to his ordeal. Braving extreme cold, Farrell endures three days and nights. The worst part comes when the prison director, upon release, smugly mentions, your comrades are waiting for you. Returning to the mine, Farrell realizes the consequences. Fellow inmates, hungry for three days due to his escape, glare at him with clubs in hand, forming two rows. Their innocent punishment turns brutal as they angrily raise their clubs and mercilessly beat the weakened Clemens Farrell. Finally collapsing, Clemens Forrell is taken to the infirmary after someone intervenes. The treating doctor, also a prisoner of war, shares Forrell's ideals and admires his courage to escape. Providing dedicated medical care, the doctor is sympathetic. Despite this, Forrell pleads for help to escape again. The doctor, aware of the deadly circumstances in the Arctic Circle of Siberia, deems escape impossible. Revealing a shocking secret, he explains that even those uninterested in escape eventually succumb to death due to lead poisoning from daily metal digging. Given the inevitable fate, the doctor suggests taking a chance and attempting escape for better luck. Committed to assisting Pharrell, the doctor swiftly removes his sweater and retrieves fur boots and warm clothes from the cupboard. Swiftly donning the clothes, Clemens Pharrell receives crucial instructions from the doctor. Hidden supplies of food along the railway line are revealed, accompanied by a handgun for self-defense. Originally intended for the doctor's escape, his recent cancer diagnosis prevents him from enduring the extreme cold. Entrusting Forel with a lunchbox containing his home address, the doctor requests him to inform the family in case of a successful escape. Under the cover of night, Forel embarks on the escape route. The following morning, the prison director discovers Farrell's absence and questions the doctor. It becomes clear that the doctor, already sacrificing himself for his countrymen, contrasts with Farrell, driven by unwavering conviction as he faces the challenging expanse of snow and wind. Meanwhile, the prison director orders a search within a 30-kilometer radius. Despite several days of searching, no trace of Clemens Farrell is found. While many assume he froze to death, the warden believes otherwise expanding the search area. On the ninth day of escape, Forel notices a sled chasing him. He sprints away, dropping his backpack in haste. As the sled catches up, he slips and falls, but to his surprise, passes unharmed. Startled, he realizes the incident was a hallucination he created in his mind. Surrounded by the vast expanse of ice and snow, Clemens Forel felt lost. With his remaining food almost gone, he couldn't predict how much longer he could endure. Despairing, he knelt in the snow, praying for divine intervention for food. However, the barren Arctic Circle offered only endless snow. 
Forced to continue dragging his exhausted body, Pharrell reached a point where his strength failed, and he collapsed from hunger and fatigue. In a dreamlike state, he faintly heard a strange sound. Following it eagerly, he discovered a seal nearby, a glimmer of hope. Pulling out the handgun from his pocket, he desperately steadied his trembling hands and fired several shots at the seal. Unfortunately, Clemens Farrell's aim was off and he missed every shot at the seal. Seeing it about to escape, he hastily got up to chase it, accidentally stepping into icy water. Despite the pain, he endured and continued the pursuit. Luck was on his side and he managed to hit the seal. Using a small knife, he cut open the seal's belly and inserted his frozen feet for warmth. He heated the seal's fat in a pot, applying it to his feet to treat frostbite with cloth strips as makeshift bandages. After a brief rest, Clemens Farrell rose once again and continued his journey. In the desolate, never-ending snowy landscape, Clemens Farrell faced the risk of losing his mind. To maintain sanity, he resorted to talking to himself, a constant companion. Using a compass after each stretch of walking prevented him from getting lost. After a few more days, he spotted a small tree in the snow, bringing overwhelming joy. Stumbling toward it, he embraced the tree, a sign that, after two months of arduous escape, he had left the frigid Arctic Circle behind. Meanwhile, the prison warden persisted, expanding the search range and issuing a wanted notice with checkpoints. Forel, now in the forest, faced a surprise blizzard shortly after he began walking. The fierce winds threatened to lift Clemens Farrell off the ground, even uprooting sturdy trees. As he stood, a large tree fell behind him, trapping him underneath. Fortunately, two passing gold prospectors came to his rescue, forming a supportive trio on their journey. As the season turned, they decided to navigate the river on a makeshift raft. Enjoying the scenery and lively conversations, they shared life stories. However, the river turned turbulent, and Clemens Farrell and Matern struggled to control the raft. Semyon fell into the river, prompting Farrell to risk his safety and jump in for a rescue. After a struggle, Farrell successfully pulled Semyon back to shore. However, Matern abandoned them, riding the raft away alone. Returning to their shelter, Farrell assumed Semyon had drowned, and thinking he found gold, stole Semyon's belongings. To his surprise, Semyon returned in time. Faced with Matern's heartless betrayal, Semyon took decisive action, ending his life with a gunshot. The two remaining companions resumed their journey, facing increasing difficulty as winter set in. Clemens Forel intended to share Semyon's burdens, but Semyon misunderstood, thinking he was trying to steal gold. In a swift motion, Semyon struck Forel with his bag, causing him to tumble down the mountain. Rendered unconscious, Forel awoke to find himself surrounded by wolves. Quickly climbing a small tree, he fended off the persistent wolves tearing at his pant legs. Despite his efforts, the tree snapped, and he was on the brink of becoming the wolves' meal. Gunshots in the distance signaled rescue. Local herders had arrived, killing several wolves. Brought to their village, Clemens Forel received care from compassionate herders. With their help, his body quickly recovered, and the warmth he experienced after so long instilled a sense of belonging. Developing a deep friendship with the herders, Clemens Farrell faced a challenge when the prison warden's wanted notice reached the village. Despite the reluctance, he had to continue his escape. Before leaving, the herders provided supplies and gifted him a hunting dog. The journey with the loyal dog became less lonely, and they traveled together for another year. Arriving at a lumber mill one day, the hungry dog ventured into the logging area seeking food but was driven away by workers. Upon Forel's call, the workers recognized him. The mill owner offered food and drink, arranging for Forel to board a train to Germany. With homecoming within reach, a radiant smile appeared on Clemens Farrell's face. Unaware that the lumber mill owner had reported him, Clemens Farrell found soldiers assembled by the prison warden waiting at the train station. Observing the unusual situation, he managed to evade the soldiers by circling around the train. 
Unfortunately, he was caught by the warden at a crucial moment. Just as hope seemed lost, the hunting dog bravely intervened, pouncing on the warden and fiercely biting him. Its loyalty bought Pharrell another chance to escape. However, the dog was shot dead in the process. Grieving, Pharrell continued running. In a moment of urgency, he climbed onto an overpass and jumped onto a passing train, narrowly escaping once again. He traveled tirelessly, moving forward, and by 1952, disheveled and penniless, Clemens Farrell stared hungrily at a plate of hand-pulled noodles. Unfortunately, the owner promptly kicked him out. Feeling helpless, Clemens Farrell approached a pancake vendor where friendly girls welcomed him, but his pockets were empty. Sensing his situation, Farrell left dejectedly. Suddenly, a kind-hearted girl broke off a piece of flatbread and had her child give it to him. Startled by the boy's gesture, Pharrell hesitated before realizing he had been given warm and steaming flatbread. This caught the attention of a Jewish man. Taking the flatbread, Pharrell sought refuge in a nearby church, earnestly praying. The Jewish man, witnessing the scene, did not report him. As a former prisoner of war, Pharrell brought him to his dwelling. After freshening up, he transformed back to his original appearance. The Jewish man provided him with a passport and travel documents. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Clemens Farrell arrived at the Soviet border. After inspection, he was allowed to pass, finally tasting freedom. However, at the midpoint of the Sua Bridge, a beam of light revealed the familiar face of the prison warden. Panicking, Pharrell realized the warden had been waiting there. Glancing behind, he saw he was still on Soviet soil, and the warden had the authority to arrest him. Clenching his fists, Clemens Farrell felt a deep sense of injustice, wondering if all those years of arduous escape were in vain. To his surprise, the warden stepped aside, clearing a path for him. Farrell couldn't believe it, but cautiously walked past. The warden, a soldier, had been won over by Forrell's seven years of courageous escape, choosing to let him go. As a soldier, he saw himself as the ultimate winner. Clemens Farrell smoothly passed through the checkpoint, overcoming numerous obstacles. Finally, on a snowy night, he returned to his longed-for home. Observing his family's every move from outside the window, the heartwarming scene filled Clemens Farrell with overwhelming emotions. As his wife and daughter prepared to leave for church, he quietly followed behind them. His daughter suddenly sensed something and turned around, spotting her long-lost father. The two embraced in excitement. His wife, approaching, gently caressed her husband's face. The reunion felt like a dream, and tears of joy flowed. Perhaps, in moments like these, the true meaning of life is revealed. I hope you've enjoyed this thrilling tale of resilience and redemption. If you found it captivating, consider subscribing for more compelling stories. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.